Hey folks, welcome to this week's vlog. I've got a very special short feature for you here this week, and it basically is a prelude to the upcoming feature episode this, this, uh, that will be released this Friday. And it is all about catching these deep, sluggish, following muskies. And one of, my, one of my favorite things to throw on a deep follow, whether it's a hot follow or, or like a lazy, sluggish follow, is a downsized crankbait. And in, in particular, you know, the Depth Raider. Now this particular lure is the lure that will be in this featured episode coming up that will be released at noon on Friday. Um, and those of you who may be watching this after this video is released, you can also take a look at this as, as kind of a, an insider you know, vid, uh, video of sorts. <clears throat> And this vlog is going to break down kind of how I fished this lure. First of all, the 6-inch Depth Raider is really killer for sluggish, deep follows in, you know, those lesser conditions. Cold fronts, fishing pressure, anything like that where you're just, you don't have hot fish, but you're getting, you're seeing fish. Um, but this bait, of course, also really catches fish that don't even follow. My favorite, this is my favorite bait to fish in, in those kind of conditions. And when I'm fishing alongside uh, friends and stuff too that are getting follows, but they're down and low and behind the bait, and especially when I'm fishing deeper, clearer water uh, or, you know, areas that have more of a break line to them, you know, more more deep open water that, that's in crankbait territory, that, you know, six feet and deeper kind of stuff. Most anglers are throwing shallow lures over those fish, and then, you know, those fish are looking up and then they're following in. But if you throw something that runs deeper and more in the zone that the fish are actually in, you have a bigger tendency to get those fish to strike. Now, what I do when I fish this 6-inch Death Raider, first of all, I fish it on a long, softer rod. My friends at St. Croix now have the perfect rod for this for this bait, and it is their Downsizer 9 they're nine foot medium light, and it's called medium light in the musky world. You know, obviously it's not a medium light in the bass world or the walleye world, but in the musky world, it's a medium light. And it's it's got an almost parabolic action. It's fantastic for throwing these small five and six inch lures, superior figure eights with that nine foot downsizer. And of course, when you hook fish, it's nothing nothing beats this bait, that, that rod, because it just keeps a nice, even pressure on the fish at all times. And one of the big secrets also to that rod is that it, it doesn't put any undue heavy pressure ever on the fish when you're fishing small treble hooks, okay? So that rod is key. And as you watch in this episode, <clears throat> that, that rod is key to getting these fish to strike and keeping them hooked on these figure eights. Now, the next thing that I do with this particular lure that I think I wanna point out, you can see how beat up this bait is. I've caught a lot of fish on it. By the way, when you catch a lot of fish in these bait, there's going to be some maintenance that occurs every once in a while. And most of, most of the time it occurs on hook hangers, and most often it's on that front line tie. One of the things I do with the front line tie is if it, if it, if it gets loose at all from, from fighting fish and, and getting, you know, what, where a lot of this, by the way, where a lot of this occurs is in the landing net when these fish are really putting a lot of stress on the bait. But if you have, get a loose line tie, Real simple way to, to solve that, drop a super glue. In fact, the gel super glues that are out now, you put a drop of a gel super glue and just leave it alone, you know, for a few minutes and it's ready to go again. Tuning these baits, a lot of times they'll go out of tune, you know, after you've caught a lot of fish on them. Real simple way to tune these baits back up. Make sure you have a small needle nose vice grips in your boat at all times. And these things are great for this. And I'll show you a real simple way I, I tune these baits is I will just take the needle nose vice grips, clamp it on the bait like this, clamp it right on the line tie. And then, you know, I'll bend, I'll bend this, slightly bend this left or right, depending upon how the lure is running, okay? The lure is running to the right, I'll bend the line tie to the left and vice versa. But these, nothing tunes a, a crankbait easier than these needle nose vice grips. So that's how you tune it. And I'll hold it like this, you can see too, is just, just bend it right or bend it left to, to straighten out the tune on your bait. So these are great, great tools for this. Another thing I do when I'm fishing rocks, I caught this fish that you're going to see in that episode on rocks. And what I do on rocks is I take the treble hooks and I bend them. Uh, you use the same hook, the same vice grips. Lock it tight and I'll bend that treble hook inward slightly. Inward slightly. So you get that point of that hook. 
just off of it's it's over that parallel to the hook shank it's actually bent inwards a little bit and what what does that do it takes all of the pressure off of the treble hook I don't know if you can see that or not but that's got a slightly inward bend now you can exaggerate that even more than I did okay but what that does is when that when that hook is sitting against that bait and it's running into rocks the point is not hitting the rocks as much as often if you have that point sticking out it's getting filed off every time it hits a rock so you have to constantly sharpen it i found that if you bend those points in a little bit they go through the rocks better you'll notice that a lot of the bass fishermen today are using those those wide gap inward bent trebles for the same reason is because they you know they they hook fish well they, they enable you to fish, especially a short shank version of that, it enables you to fish a larger version of that treble hook. And at the same time, it, it protects the point of the hook. And once the fish are on, uh, my, uh, my argument here, by the way, beyond, the, beyond keeping the hook sharp, is that it, it seems to keep the fish hook better with that inward bend, bend on it. Now, the other thing is, speaking of trebles, is a lot of times I will, tr I will trade out the hook sizes on these baits, depending upon how I want to fish this. Of course, JBO makes these uh, hook replacement kits, which makes it real simple to do. And these these baits typically come with one aughts on them on the six inch depth rater. And the one aughts great uh, when you're for a buoyant deep diver that you know for for weed cover and stuff like that. And we by the way one of the other reasons we 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 package it with a one aught is that a lot of walleye fishermen, a lot of guys fishing things other than muskies are fishing those baits, so they have you know more buoyancy. Um, you know, uh, a, a better up and down action to them, and they'll run slightly shallower with the one on on it. The, this bait is so versatile, you can fish with a one on, a two on, and a three on. So when I want a less buoyant bait that runs deeper, <clears throat> and and you know, kind of hang, I get that hang motion, that that suspending hang time. I jump all the way up to a three on, and of course, JBO makes these replacement hook kits so that you can you can do that. And you know, above and beyond. Uh, the JBO trebles, you can change out your hooks any way you want to. One of the things I always suggest people do though is when you go up in hook size, you shorten the shank and you can get away much easier with, with a larger treble hook size without having a lot of hook fouling problems. So, but you see, I fish with the little depth trigger with pretty big hooks in a lot of situations. And it, it, it's also superior for trolling or any high speed activity. Okay, so if you want to troll this bait at higher speeds, more weight under the lure is going to give it a better keel. So if you're going to do that three, four, five mile an hour kind of trolling, putting more weight under the lure, more hook size, will stabilize the lure and make it track a lot better at, at higher speeds. Now, <clears throat> one last thing with these treble hooks and, and weight and stuff like that is, is you're going to see that there's a difference in action. It's subtle, but it, it, the, the, the larger trebles will tighten up the action on the bait. And sometimes that's desired, okay? So there's a lot of different reasons to try different treble hooks on your baits. But one of the last reasons, you know, those of you out there that just like bigger hooks for muskies uh, and, and the fish you fish for is, you know, you can easily take these smaller lures and make them fish big by just changing out the treble hooks. You see, I just did a, a recent... A uh, quick bit on that for bass. This is how do you make a small crankbait fish big? Bigger treble hooks. Shorten the shank, go up in hook size, and you can get that done. Okay, what, here's and while now we're going to talk finally about retrieve with this bait. When I cast this bait out, I basically have three goals in mind when I make when I'm casting this bait. I, I rarely cast this bait out and just cast it out and crank it in. I cast it out and I'm probably going to cast it near cover right away. So when I cast it out and it's near cover, okay, I want to work it like a jerk bait. So just like I talk about with the shallow reader all the time, I use this bait as a hybrid bait. So in the early part of my retrieval, I'm ticking weeds or I'm ticking rocks. This fish that you're going to see me catch on this episode, I caught on rocks. And early in the retrieve, you know, I'm bumping rocks. So as soon as I hit cover, just remember, as soon as you hit cover, start putting some slack in your line and working it like a jerk bait. So for the first 25%, at least you retrieve, work it like a jerk bait. The first 25 to 30% of your, 33% uh, of your bait, of your retrieve, work it like a jerk bait. Jerk, pause, you know, slack line, pull a little bit and jerk, jerk, jerk. And you're going to trigger, if those fish are laying under those rocks and you start jerking it like that, boom, you're going to trigger strikes. 
Okay, a lot of your strikes will come like that. A lot of your strikes will come, by the way, you tick the rock, tick the wood, you tick the weeds or whatever, you, get, you know, it floats up a little bit, you, you make the next jerk or the next pull on your, on your rod and boom, that fish is on there. And then, you know, a big percentage of them also, when you hit and that bait is rising, they just take it right there. Now, the middle of my retrieve, I always go with the second, that's the second phase of retrieve, I always go to it, just a straight retrieve lure. And I might, I might gun the reel a little bit and then slow it down a little bit and gun the reel a little bit, you know, to, to create, if there's a following fish, to try and trigger that fish to strike. And then I, I, the grand finale in that, the third phase of that retrieve, is to, is to do the figure eight. Now, this bait is killer on the figure eight with those deep follows, whether they're lazy or they're hot fish when they're deep. Two things trigger the, that, that this bait really works to trigger, trigger following muskies when it's deep like that. Is one, it's deep, then all of a sudden it's coming up. All of a sudden, you know, it hits that apex and it's coming up. As soon as it starts coming up, okay, that's, that's, that's a directional change right there. And that triggers a lot of strikes. A lot of times when you get that near both side strike, you actually had a directional change coming, a, a vertical change coming on the bait. And then, of course, as soon as I see the lure, I start to figure eight the lure. So here's where the nine foot rod comes in handy again, because I've got that long rod. I won't retrieve that lure all the way to the rod tip before figuring, figure eighting it. I'll leave a few feet of line out and I'll take a nine foot rod and create now like a, you know, a 12, 13, 14 foot figure eight with the, with the depth reader. And that's what makes this bait super deadly. You can make the biggest figure eights of all with this bait because of the, natu the natural vibrating action. It wants to, you know, waddle and wobble right outside, you know, and, and, and follow the track of your figure eight. So when you're figuring this lure with line, extra line up like that, one of the keys to doing this successfully is to watch the lure figure eight. Don't figure eight your rod tip as much as watch the lure. Just watch your lures, you're figure eighting it. And you know, you keep the lure in a perfect figure eight. And if you see a follow, you know, just accentuate everything you're doing. And one of the beauties also with the deep diver on a figure eight is you can create more vertical movement. So what I do a lot of times with a depth raider is I will bring that bait up real high and shallow and then you know then on the straightaways I dive it way back down again and that really drives those muskies crazy and makes them strike. So wrapping it all up when I have deep lazy follows and deep follows in general especially those deep follows behind the bait fishing with a couple of friends and you know you're, you're getting follows but they're just low and behind the bait Dig out a six inch depth reader and try the tricks that I just talked about and you might score on a fish just like the one you're gonna see in this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, thanks.